In this tutorial video, we're going to go over importing your own assets. So let's get started. I'm going to import an image that I want to use in my doodly video. So I'm going to go to the blue plus sign and I'm going to browse for the file. It's on my desktop and I'm going to click open. You'll notice that the title is the file name. If I want to change it, I can change it or I can just accept it. Click continue. And here's my image. Now, if I were to hit preview, you'll see that Doodly does its best to draw the image. It does basically a scribble pattern that goes from left to right. Now, if you wanted to make it a little more precise, you can tell Doodly exactly how to draw it by clicking on this pencil icon. This opens up a panel here on the right. You'll see the live preview. See, this is doodly right here, drawing it in. As described, doodly scribbles it in like so. Okay, so that's the live preview. Right now, the background is set to the default white. It's a black image, so I don't need to change the background but sometimes if you have an image that has a lot of light colors it's hard to see the lines so you can change it to black or transparent i'm going to stick with white now i can save and return as i'm editing this or i can return without saving i have some tools here that i can use as i'm working with the image which I'll show you as we go. Likewise, the path size, that will come into play once we have a path here. Your zoom buttons, lets you zoom in or out for greater detail. How long it's gonna take for the animation to be drawn. By default, it's three seconds. The reveal mode, it's either gonna be draw or fade in. I'm gonna go for draw for now and I'll show you fade in later. And then the reveal paths. So each stroke is a path. So right now we have one path. If I click here, beginning, you'll see I'm creating a path. It's kind of hard to see it right now. This is very thin. If I change the path size, see now I can make it larger or smaller. You'll notice that the live preview is now showing my one stroke, okay? I can make adjustments by dragging on each of these points. And then I can just make my drawing path here. And again, make the adjustments. Control Z if you make a mistake. Now I can make it a little fatter. So that's my first stroke. Now I'm gonna add a new one, clicking new path. And I'm going to make these little pieces come in. And then I'm just gonna continue up here, okay? And maybe I don't want to reveal those little, I don't know what you call them, those little spikes. Maybe I don't want to reveal them yet. So I'm just going to make my path avoid those little spiky areas for the moment. I'm just going to adjust this so the spikes don't show up. Control Z. Just making some adjustments here. And then I want to do a new path to get this last little section in and then now maybe it's time to do those little spikes so i'm going to go new path and i'm just going to zigzag to get them all. and then we'll do a path for each of these and i think i'm just going to make this fatter so that it just does the whole wheel well in one stroke all right new path and same for this one it's going to be a nice fat path and I like that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and return. And let's take a look at the preview. And that's exactly as I expected. Now if we wanna do some fine tuning, we select it, hit the pencil icon, and we're back where we were. Now we can use some of these other tools. I wanna to zoom in a little and see if I need to make any adjustments. Maybe I want that to go a little bit further, okay? And pan over. I can now zoom back out. 
maybe I want the animation to go a little bit slower because it did seem like the, it drew pretty quick. So let's say six seconds. If you want to change the mode you're in, you can change it. So when you're in this arrow mode, you're not going to accidentally click and add points to your screen. See, I'm clicking like crazy, but nothing's happening. If I click the plus sign, now this active stroke anywhere I click is going to be added to that. I did Control Z to undo those. Now I'm back to just my selection tool. Now I can select the different paths without accidentally adding points. Sometimes you want to delete a point. So what you would do is click the delete button and you'll notice when you hover over a point you can delete it now. Okay. And then if I want to add a point, I'm going to click plus. So let's take a look at it now. Save and return. Preview. It take a little bit longer for it to draw because it's a six second duration. And that looks fine. That was with the drawing effect. Now let's click pencil again and let's change it to fade. So instead of drawing in, it's going to fade in. Let's hit preview. And there it is, fading in six seconds. Now that was a PNG file. So with a PNG file or a JPEG, if you want custom paths, you do have to do them manually with that edit button as I showed you. Now if you have an SVG file, that's another story because SVG files have paths already in them. Now you can import an SVG file and load its paths and doodly will draw along those points for you automatically. So let's go ahead and do one. I have a little dinosaur that I found. Dino.svg. And I'll keep that name. And here he is. Let me go ahead and delete this car for now. So he's an SVG. So if I click this pencil icon, You'll see Doodly's doing that default scribble. There it is. But we want to see what the actual SVG paths look like. They might be fine for us. So let's go ahead down here and click Load SVG Paths. I'm going to say OK. And here they are. There's seven of them. And they look like it'll be just fine. Yeah, you see it's happening. So let's go ahead and hit Save and Return. Preview. And now the hand draws the dinosaur for me. It's as easy as that. Not only can you import your own assets, you can share them with other Doodly users. For example, if I wanted to share this dinosaur, I could right click on him and choose the share option. I give him a name and then I enter my friend's email address. You can also export some of your items. And if somebody shared an asset with you, you'd find it over here in your shared button. And finally, if you're looking for more assets, you can always go to Doodly's Marketplace and you can purchase bundles of graphics that are perfect for using with Doodly. Importing audio is also very easy. Simply click on Sounds and once again, click the blue plus sign. And you're just going to browse for your sound file. In this case, I have it on my desktop. I'm going to drag and drop it in, and there it is. The title's fine, so I'm going to click Continue. And there it is, right here at the top of my list. I'm just going to drag and drop it into my soundtrack. And now I have some animal sounds. So what about fonts? If you recently purchased Doodly, you probably only have a few in your font section. You'll see I have quite a few that I have uploaded myself. I got most of them from fonts.google.com. That's a great place to get them. There are other sources as well. But how do you get them into Doodly? You click this blue plus sign and you browse your computer for your fonts. In this case, mine is in the downloads. It's the Acme font and I already unzipped it which is what you're going to need to do. So here's my unzipped folder, Acme. And here are my fonts. This is the one right here, the TFF file. 
go ahead and click open. It's going to come in. I'm fine with that name. I'm going to click continue. And I now have acne.regular. It's a brand new font for me. And I can go ahead and type in my text. And I'm going to go ahead and click done. There it is. While I'm at it, I can change the style from writing from right from left to right, which is traditional, you know, with English and other languages, or I can change it to right to left if so desired. I can also use the word wrap setting, which allows me to have it on multiple lines. And there you have it. How to import your own assets into Doodly.